When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello YouTube. So we're back on the Grease Goblins channel. Uh, this video was brought to you by the comments. They wanted to see, uh, or this particular person wanted to see a video on the others, or for show watchers, the White Walkers. Um, so yeah, if you guys are just are bleh, are excited for today's video, subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, we upload a Song of Ice and Fire videos every uh, Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. Really struggling to talk here, guys. I'm not going to lie. So sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so getting into it, we have the others. Now, I want to go into George's writing style before we get into this, because I think it plays a big part of how I think the overall arching theme is going to conclude. So George has this theme that I think is the biggest one is this anti-war theme. We see this with a lot of other books he does, um, as well as A Song of Ice Fire in general. We see the battle or the War of the Five Kings is this huge, massive conflict that affects the entire, you know, country of Westeros. And we see kind of this how it affects the you know, the normal person, the average person, the farmer. And George really does a great way of taking us inside the chapters of Arya, of Jamie, of all these other characters that see all of this. And it's very much placed there so that us as the audience realize how badly war affects other people. Because war, yes, and you're looking at from the Stark's eyes or something like this, you're saying, okay, yeah, it's valid because of all these things. But in the end, a lot of these people got butchered. A lot of these people died that were innocent because of your personal grievances. So that was what I think George is really trying to tell in the story, that war is not good. And we also know that he was not a big supporter of the Vietnam War. So I think looking at that, combined with most people have come to the conclusion, I don't know if George has actually stated this, but the others are supposed to stand for kind of climate change. How we've neglected this overarching problem I'm not going to get into the actual politics of climate change. I'm just going off of what George, I'm assuming, is trying to say with us. That the others are meant to be this problem that we've been kind of forgetting about. We've just thrown it to the side, acted like it wasn't a big deal. And now it's coming to bite us uh, because everybody's forgotten about it. Hair, like, you know, like, as you see, you know, most of the country thinks, you know, at the beginning of the story, we have Tyrion constantly saying Grumpkins and Snarks. People don't believe that this is a thing anymore. So, really, what we're going to see is John trying to convince people that this hap this is, is a thing and uniting people, uh, because I do think he is going to get resurrected. Um, if it's not John, it's somebody else the Night's Watch that understands this. Or Stannis. Um, Stannis knows that there is a problem. He's seen it from Melisandre and all this stuff. So what I'm trying to say and get to with this is that this is not going to be like the show. The show said, and I, in a behind-the-scenes uh, chat with d and uh, in one of the earlier seasons, that this is not going to be a story that is good versus bad at the end. That this is going to be a complex story on how it ends, and there's going to be not just, you know, good versus evil. Well, they completely said, screw that, and the end of the the series ended up being good versus evil. Um, with that being said, I don't think there's going to be one big old battle that defines if we win or lose against the White Walkers or the others. I don't think that's going to happen. It goes against everything George has been saying, that war is bad. It would make more sense if, let's say, there was maybe one big battle or a couple skirmishes, the good forces get pushed back, and the living and the, uh, I guess, dead, even though George says that they're not really dead, they're just another form of a life. So, I think what's going to end up happening is, we'll go back, actually. So, how I think the others even get across the wall to begin with, is I do think Euron is going to find the Horn of Winter, which at this point, a lot of people theorize, as well as I, I believe that the Horn of Winter is in the, pos in the possession of Samwell Tarly. 
at Old Town, which is where Euron currently is kind of around and plans to probably attack. So, I think what's going to happen is the horn that Sam was given to by John because they found it when they were beyond the wall. It looks like an old horn. And the horn of winter that Mance had, we know, wasn't the real one. So I think it could happen, and it's been kind of hinted at because the horn keeps getting brought up, and if it was kind of meaningless, I don't know why he would keep bringing it up. So the horn of winter, possibly, uh, in the hands of Sam, I think this horn fall makes his way to Euron, and I think Euron blows the horn, and I think the wall comes down. I think that is how we even get the others, you know, getting across the wall. Because I'm not sure how else we would have this happen, because in the show, it's very obvious that the whole thing, the whole plot with John going, you know, in season seven, you know, beyond the wall to get this, this white, is really to get Daenerys to go there to lose a dragon, so then they can, you know, use the dragon on the wall, which, you know, gets us to season eight. That does not seem like what's going to happen here. George has not made any hints towards that. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, in my opinion. So I think the wall comes down with the Horn of Winter. Now, after that, I think we see... Maybe the forces of good are not ready. They're not fully together yet. Or not, I won't even say good. The forces of the living are not completely together. And we see... Uh, the others kind of win a few battles or something like that. And we and we start to see as the living that they, A, maybe can't win this war, or two, we find out background information on to what the others want. Now, what I think the others could possibly want is they can't reproduce. So we've seen this from Craster basically giving up his sons, is that I think the whites are trying to look for a way to reproduce, maybe. Maybe that could be it. I, I'm not sure because we, again, the others in the books are very mysterious. They have very few times they come up as in like we see them in the books. So it's very hard to accurately say what they want. Now, I think it could be something with reproducing. It could be something as in maybe they want more land. I don't know why though. It's It's one of those odd things. So I think we see another possible thing that could happen is John takes a white as a wife. Now, we've seen this in kind of tales, kind of old stories, that there was an old uh, person that was the... He was basically the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. He takes a white uh, bride, and this all happens to the Night Fort. So the Night Fort is kind of described as being kind of haunted, kind of an eerie place uh, from our eyes of Sam. and. That could happen. Maybe John takes a white as his wife as some sort of negotiation agreement uh, between the whites or the others and John. Or not John the living. And maybe we see that happen. Or maybe we see them even try Azura High type thing with, you know, John and Daenerys, where John has to kill Daenerys to get Lightbringer. And we see all of that. I don't really like that because I don't think George wants to say there's one big hero and that all these prophecies are always right. I think quite the opposite. I, I think it's going to be a little darker um, than that. I'm not saying John killing Daenerys isn't dark, but I feel like that's not the way it's going to go. Maybe it does. Let me know what you guys think because it's, it's a very interesting topic because, again, we don't know a lot of knowledge about it. So a lot of this is kind of just speculation, trying to see where we end, think this can end up. I... For sure, guarantee you, though, what will not happen is I don't think there's going to be one big battle that decides it all. If it does come to that, the dead will win. Because it would make a lot of sense with the, the point of view of everybody didn't band together and face this problem, and they pushed this problem away for so long that they, got, they, they died because of it. It would make sense for what George is trying to say is that climate change is a big thing and eventually one day, who knows, maybe we're, we're not here or something. Maybe, like, you know, we destroy our own planet. That is something I can see George doing. Uh, so I can see that. I can see some sort of negotiation with the, the others. Something like that, I 
think has got to happen. I just... Unless you guys think I'm wrong and there is going to be one big battle where John leads the forces of the living against the, the, the others and John wins or something like that. I don't know. I just, I don't think that's going to happen. It doesn't fit George's theme for what he's going for, I feel like, in these books. So, that's kind of all I got in this video. I could do a, you know, some of the history of them. But, again, we don't really know a lot about them. A lot of it's trying to put pieces together. We don't know why the others slaughter uh, the humans as much as they do. But, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys all enjoyed Halloween week. Some of the more spooky characters or evil characters. If you guys want me to talk about somebody that you guys like or something that I haven't done already, um, let me know. Uh, leave it down in the comments. I will try to get to as many as I can. Uh, they're kind of piling up, but I'll try my best. Next week, we're going to have, I think, Blood Raven, uh, Jamie, maybe Mace Tyrell. Not sure about that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that one in. And then I might, I'm going to have a... We have a lot of videos that could be possibly coming out next week. A season 8 breakdown of why it was so bad, because that was requested a while ago. Just now getting to it. And then I have another video that I wanted to do next week on if Ned was really stupid and how he played the game in King's Landing. Um, because, I don't know. I mean, it, it's... It's debatable, I will say, but I am interested to talk about that. And even another video that I don't know if I'm going to release next week or the week after, uh, the morality of Game of Thrones, or A Song of Ice and Fire as a whole. But I'm specifically talking about one situation where Robert Baratheon says, you know, we should kill or assassinate Daenerys and Viserys because she's pregnant. And talking about if that the morality of that decision is that a good thing, a bad thing, because it's a very com complex and philosophical issue that I think is really cool to talk about. So kind of rambled on there for a little bit at the end of this video, but if you guys are excited for any of those, and if you really want to see me do any of those next week, make sure you guys let me know. Um, because if any, some of those videos probably will be pushed to the week after. So yeah, thank you guys all for watching. Um, hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next week.